took it into his head to make off with a, the most indispensable portion of my apparel. Postponing, therefore, for the moment, my suicidal designs, I just um, slipped my nether extremities into the sleeves of my coat. I made my way, uh, intent only upon the purloiner of my property, with my nose in the air, when suddenly I perceived that my feet rested no longer upon terra firma. I had cast myself over a precipice, and should no doubt have been dashed to pieces on the rocks below, had it not been for my great fortune in grasping the guide rope of a passing balloon. I quickly perceived the situation in which I now stood, or, or rather hung. I attempted to make my presence known to the aeronaut above me, but either the fool could not or the villain would not perceive me. I was about to let go when I heard a low humming. And over the edge of the car was the angel. Help! Oh, no, not I. Help yourself and be damned. And he let fall a heavy bottle of Kirschenwasser which hit me square on the head and made me imagine my brains were entirely dashed out. I was about to drop quietly into the sea when he called out, Hold on now. Don't be in such a hurry. Do you believe now at the last hmm, in the possibility of the odd? Uh-huh. <laughs> Won't you believe that I am the angel of the odd? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Won't you acknowledge that you will be the blind drunk and the fool? <laughs> Then place your right hand in your left hand breeches pocket in token of your full submission to the angel of the odd. This thing I found very difficult to do. In the first case, my left arm having been fractured, if I were to let go with the right arm, I would have to let go entirely. And in the second place, why we could have no pants until we caught the crow! <laughs> I was forced to shake my head in the negative indicating that I found it inconvenient just at that moment to comply with the angel's very reasonable request. <laughs> Go to the devil, Dan, and enjoy a sharp knife across the guide rope. We happened at that moment to be passing over my house, which had been handsomely rebuilt during my peregrinations, and I tumbled headlong down the ample chimney. When I came to my senses, I was lying on the floor with my feet in the ashes of an expired fire. At my head, the wreck of a small table and miscellaneous desserts and broken bottles. At my elbow, an empty bottle of Kirschenwasser. <laughs> and thus avenged himself the angel of God. <laughs>